Hi, beautiful people. How are ya? I hope you're having a great day. I was just wondering where you live. Is it already cold there? Do you like the cold? Or does it cause distress in your body and in your muscles and joints? I like getting the inside of my house ready for winter, but my body says something different when the cold weather actually hits. So I'm trying to stay positive and just live in the moment. One step at a time, guys, that's all we can do. Today, I want to talk about how researchers and doctors may view fibromyalgia. And I want us to think about how we can set tangible goals that we can actually accomplish. So here we go. This might be a tangent, but I'm going to do it anyways. What I find truly interesting is that researchers find it difficult to ignore the high prevalence of fibromyalgia in the general population, which is around 2.7%, but it can oscillate from 2 to 8% depending on how it's evaluated and what region of the world that you live in. The scientific community could make a more concerted effort to better define the aspects of fibromyalgia, especially the pathophysiological one that characterizes our condition. When a condition is still under debate, as in fibro, it means there isn't a consensus on the etiopathogenesis or cause and development of the disease, the diagnostic or how to diagnose it, or the classification of it, as well as how to properly treat fibromyalgia. It troubles me that within the scientific community, fibromyalgia is still a controversial disease. Sure, there are those who, man, there are best advocates. They blow trumpets to ward off people who disbelieve. And then there are still others who, I'm not sure where they are, to be honest. I think the biggest problem is that we still don't have biomarkers to evaluate the severity or the evolution of fibromyalgia. How do we assess the degree of disability of a patient? Is that even necessary? I mean, researchers believe it is. And the complexity of fibro is increased because of its complex polysymptomatology, which continuously evolves during the course of the disease in each patient. I mean, just think of all of the changes over the years on how to diagnose fibro, I can count at least five different criterion since 1990. Today, I think it is clearer, but what do you think? Watch my video on the latest criterion for fibromyalgia if you need more information on that topic. Anyways, the most tangible goal for an individual with fibromyalgia may be to work on short-term goals that can help to increase our daily functioning and quality of life, whatever that means to you. Treatment should always be tailored to our needs. I might be able to climb a step ladder and paint a ceiling very slowly and over a period of time, but you may not. You may be able to run a mile, and I cannot, so it doesn't matter. What matters is what you are able to do. However, 
I think we can get stuck in the, I can't do that arena. I know I have, and maybe you can't, and maybe you shouldn't, but what if you could stretch yourself to do more? Just a thought. Start your movement by doing less than your physical capabilities and then increase it over time. That's what I've done. I can remember the day, the many days where I couldn't even stand up long enough to wash my dishes. So it's a process of one day at a time. I mean, now I'm able to do a light aerobic exercise. 20 minutes long, three times a week. Gentle stretching is absolutely vital for us. And for me, exercise. has helped my posture and flexibility. I need that. Am I healed? No. But I know if I stop doing these things that I will get back into a constant state of pain and exhaustion. One thing that is for sure is, you know, you can't always avoid stress. It's just part of life. But I do my best to try to keep my stress minimal. Sometimes it gets the best of us. So just hang in there during that time because a flare is probably going to happen. And then once you get through it, start working on that small goal once again. Fibromyalgia is not progressive in the sense that it's going to make us unalive. And even though some doctors don't think it's debilitating for many of us, it feels like it. So it takes a positive attitude for us to adapt to fibromyalgia. And we're not alone in this struggle. We have each other. The more we adapt to this disease, the better our prognosis. It's living with fear of movement that can stop us in our tracks. Beautiful people, don't let that happen to you. I've been there. I know how that feels. If you do have severe symptoms and are unable to perform a normal job or have a satisfying relationship with a partner, then you may require greater attention and a multidisciplinary team. I've been there. I probably had five doctors at one time. That's okay. We do what we got to do. It might require a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, a rheumatologist, a psychologist. You determine what you need. Many, many patients do improve over time with help and are able to learn to live with this disease. It's important that you understand what aggravates your symptoms, and learn to alter your behavior. But while you're doing that, don't forget to live. I send you gentle hugs and support. Love you. I couldn't remember and a multitude.